Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the AWS Suite between the 14th and 15th holes at East Lake Golf Course at the Tour Championship in Atlanta. I'm joined by Elaine Chason. Uh, you run all the golf partnerships at Amazon, right? That's correct. Yeah. I lead a team that we focus on the golf industry and driving innovation. Yeah, with lots of innovation happening now. And to talk about some of the innovation, we also have Scott Gutterman. Uh, uh, you're the director of digital services and some a senior vice president yeah. of uh, digital yeah. Uh, yeah. digital uh, and broadcast technologies. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, also returning Zcast star. Yes, yeah. yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much for being on. Now, Elaine, um, I want to start with you. Okay. Uh, just talk in general about the partnership. Uh, AWS has with the PGA Tour. I know you're somewhere in the 10-year partnership, but uh, talk about what the initial goals were and how that maybe has changed over the years. Yes, for sure. We launched a 10-year partnership back in March of 2021, and originally the partnership was focused on the vision of being able to show every single shot, any golf tournament, any player globally. That was kind of like our North Star. So during the time, it's kind of morphed a little bit. Uh, still have that vision, but we're also just focused on new and personalized fan experiences and creating more entertaining moments. So it's all about data. All about data, yeah. yes. And Scott, um, uh, I know in the in the um, uh, little breakfast uh, little learn we did, uh, we talked about, you talked about some of the data that you were using, and just uh, tell the audience just, what are all the sources of data you have? Like, it seems sure. like there's an unbelievable amount. And, sure, so yeah. it is an incredible amount of data. I think, you know, as we were talking about earlier this morning and yesterday morning, um, we captured two million data points, typically at any given point in time around the course. We have 120 to 150 cameras helping us with that capture along with 36 radars, you know, across the entire course. So we're getting all of that data in that does not include, or that, that also includes all of our video capture that we do. So we're using cameras, those cameras to capture not only scoring and dictate scoring, but of course the broadcast, the streaming that we do with ESPN, uh, the work that we do with NBC for this particular event, all goes into our, you know, essentially our media lake and our available content uh, to create all kinds of experiences using AWS tools. And how big is that media lake now? Uh, so the media asset management system right now is 25 petabytes. 25 petabytes, Yep. that's one big data set. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, I'm curious as to, uh, one of the other things you mentioned was the ShotLink system, which I think every golf fan's familiar with. Sure. Uh, you completely rebuilt that a couple of years ago. Now, it's always been pretty successful, so what was the motivation for rebuilding it and what did you do? Well, I mean, the motivation for us is that the ShotLink system hadn't really been rebuilt in probably you know, almost 10, 15 years. Um, it was running on additional great technology and it was a well-run system, uh, but it was time to upgrade it, time to take advantage of modern technologies so that we can increase the number of data points that we're capturing across the course to help our players enhance their play because they use the, the data for training, um, as well as to give our fans all kinds of new experiences. So with uh, working with AWS, we started about four years ago, how do we rebuild uh, everything that we do for ShotLink on top of AWS? US. Okay, so it's all cloud-based now. It's all cloud-based. Yeah, and uh, Elaine, I want to come back to you. Yes. Uh, from all uh, accounts, it looks like this has been a tremendous partnership from both sides. Why do you think that partnerships work so well? What, what are the, I guess, secret elements of it that maybe made it work so well? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, one of the main ingredients why our partnership is so successful is we share a similar culture and perspective. So a lot of our teams come together, we challenge each other, we try to push the boundaries of what's available in technology, all in support of solving the very, very difficult problems that exist in producing and distributing uh, golf. Yeah, and I know one of the things that I found impressive is whenever I've talked to somebody at the PGA Tour about AWS, they've never referred to him as a vendor. Yeah. It's always a partner, and I think that, uh, I know that's easy to say, but I think in this case it actually truly has acted like a partnership. And uh, So Scott, I want to ask you about uh, generative AI. Uh, sure. This is something we've talked about before, but I know um, there's, uh, I think you said, 32 identified use cases. That's right. And uh, can you talk about a, maybe a two or three that you find are notable? And then the one I want you to dive deep in is the AI commentary, which sure. I think is pretty interesting. Sure, so for us, we're looking at use cases that stretch from efficiencies for our internal staff all the way through to what can we do for our players, and ultimately, what can we provide to our fans? So that's kind of how the use cases are grouped together. Uh, you know, for our, our, for our internal staff efficiencies, it's how are we using you know, generative AI chatbots internally to get access to 30 plus years of media you know, media guides, all in PDFs, uh, as largely where yeah. all that information is stored, 
and it's really kind of a hodgepodge of different types of data inside those media guides. So now our staff can go in if they want to write a story about Rory McIlroy and how he performed at the 2016 Tour Championship, they can use that tool to do that. We also use it to help with our players and our rules books and help our competition staff to get at the rules. And then moving on to like our fan experiences, you know, the PGA Tour commentary is really where we're starting. It's the demonstration that you've seen uh, here today is providing more context and more commentary around every single shot that's hit on the PGA Tour. Typical PGA Tour event has somewhere between 30 to 32,000 shots. Uh, everybody wants to follow their favorite player. You know, if they want to follow Joel Dahman around the course, uh, they want to know exactly what he's doing. They want to know what the impact of every shot is. You know, if he's, you know, if his uh, uh, strokes gain is, you know, is decreasing. If you know he's hitting green you know all throughout the course so we want to be able to tell them and really take it beyond just like you know shot one hit 350 yards and shot two is 125 yards into the hole um, we need we want to provide greater context uh, and so that's something that we're working on now hope to have rolled out by the players championship yeah, so to the public I guess there would be no way for t TV to be able to comment on 32,000 shots right it would be very <laughs> difficult for TV to comment on 32,000 shots and we'd love to be able to do that but this helps you really cover what is a non-linear sport yeah. for three and a half days uh, right down until you get to Sunday because you want to know what's going on with the leaders all the time but you also want to know what's going on elsewhere on the course yeah, what I liked about that too is it actually added commentary right it wasn't just uh, um, so-and-so hit their shot 200 right. yards, it, it actually added a little bit of, uh, you know, adverbs and adjectives and descriptions right, in right. there to talk about the, right. it's, you know, the... It's adding context yeah, yeah. to what what that shot, what that distance, what that shot means, uh, in particular for that player, uh, maybe how they played that year, and then maybe how they're playing that event against the rest of the field. And so it really kind of gives you an idea of how that player is performing. And that's really what we strive for, because we felt like you know, we could do speech to text, or you know, or text uh, speech to text pretty easily if we wanted to, or just text more text to text. Um, but we really wanted to provide what was what is becoming truly narrative commentary. And before generative AI, how would you actually go through those PDFs? Was it largely just <laughs> loaded up and we control? would open a PDF <laughs> and look for what we need, and we would go, oh, I think. Uh, Joel Dahman came in second at the Shriners, you know, event uh, last year. Let's go check that out. No, it's, it was not Shriners. It was, you know, RSM or something like. So it would, it would. They really weren't very searchable. As I think a lot of people, you know, in any any data driven business, have these kind of silos or these wells. I would call them really wells of opportunity with data and content that they have, but it's very hard to access. And that's in part what generative AI is helping us get access to. Great. Now, Lane, I'm going to ask you about generative AI. Sure. There are lots of generative AI solution providers out there. Uh, there's new ones every day, it seems. Uh, what makes Amazon's unique? So, and I think we see this with the tour, right? So very simply, we give choice of models. So if you look at Amazon Bedrock, it's not just one model. It's multiple models. We're continuously adding models. We have models that we use for partners, our own Amazon models. So we give partner choice based upon what they're trying to do. You know, if it's multimodal and they need text summarization or videos, they have different choice. So I think that's one uh, reason. So it's the, not one model to rule them all. No, it yeah. isn't, no. And then the second reason also, I think, is comes down to not using, it's a privacy thing. So we don't use PGA Tours proprietary data to train our models. You know, the data is kept in their account, uh, private to them, and it has built in security. Security is job zero at Amazon. Yeah, I was so, gonna ask you about security, yes, so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, security yeah. is job zero. So we build in the same security practices that we have with our other platforms. We bring that to generative AI, and I think that's one of the more important reasons why the tour is using this technology. Yeah, I thought it was interesting on the panel this morning, your security team talked about how they have, all the security leaders have a meeting with the CEO yes. every Friday, right? So yes. uh, so if you're talking at the mat level, I think that's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty serious. So, Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And um, uh, I wanted to uh, ask kind of, a, change pivot a little bit here to the topic of diversity. And I don't know, maybe Scott, this is a better question that you'd lead. How do you, when you think about all the activities that you do, and I'd like to get your thoughts too, but you know, the, I know that the PGA Tour has been trying to bring more diversity to the game, reach more fans. How do you think this initiative with Generative AI helps with that? Well, one of the challenges in creating diversity for consumption is creating the diversity in content, right? And so given the breadth of what we have to cover, it's very difficult to create, you know, something that might be particularly good for, uh, you know, everybody in general versus something that might be particularly good for people who follow Victor Hovland in Norway, right, or Matthew Pavan in France. And it truly and, is a global game. Right, right. and yeah. because it's a global game, we have multiple languages that, you know, our players speak in um, and different ways to approach content in all of those areas. And so, um, 
what we really are looking to do with generative AI is to provide the opportunity to uh, use that to provide an opportunity to diversify the languages, diversify the approach, and to generate content uh, off of maybe a generalized piece of content that might reach more, more people, uh, whether that's you know more international people or you know address people in a different way, right? You may yeah. want somebody who's new to golf might want to hear golf interpreted in a way that they, it, was, it is being explained to them versus somebody who's a hardcore fan or maybe a betting fan uh, and they want to know all the statistics that will help them you know, with their fantasy sports. Yeah, and do you have any to add, Natalie? I know, sure. I know diversity is big in Amazon. Yeah, yeah. massively uh, big. And I think, you know, we see that the PGA Tour is a trailblazer in sports, right? They are so incredibly innovative. And so what we've been doing is working in partnership with the tour to bring that same level of innovation to women's golf. So, for instance, like yeah. the KPMG Women's PGA Championship and the U.S. Women's Open uh, used very similar technology in the tour this year to kind of bring that data, bring more information to the women's game and the women's sport. Uh, so a wonderful collaboration. Yeah, women's golf has really seen a tremendous uptick yeah. over the last year. It's been good to see. And uh, just last question, Scott, and then I'll ask uh, you for closing comments. Um, you work and live and breathe in IT. I think you have the luxury of being on the cutting edge of things. Uh, a lot of the IT pros I talk to, kicking the tires with generative AI, a little nervous about it, don't know where to start. A couple of pieces of advice you could give uh, the audience as to, if they're thinking about it, how they get started. Sure, I, I think we started with experimentation. 2023 for us was the year of uh, proof of concepts and experimentation and trying things and learning for us. So that was the first step. All of this year has been about, you know, creating production ready uh, uh, tools, efficiencies, and eventually experiences for our fans. And so this is really about how do you work generative AI into your everyday software development life cycle? What does it mean to have multiple models? Like what happens when a model goes from a 1.5 version to a 1.6 version? That's a big challenge, they change and, fast. Right, and they yeah. change fast, so that means how do you go through testing to make sure that those models are still going to be useful for the, for the structures and the experiences that you've built around them. So our teams are very focused on that right now, and we begin to see the, the uh, fruits of that uh, beginning of next year. And uh, Elaine, uh, just uh, the last question to you, is similar to what I asked Scott, uh, just talk about uh, co-innovation and the importance of that with a true partner uh, like AWS. Yeah, I mean, it's everything. The tour is extremely collaborative with us. If you know at Amazon, 90% of our features and services are driven by customer requirements. And the tour is very gracious to us to continuously give us feedback. So they are a part of multiple beta pro programs and, um, I, and especially in generative AI. So uh, they give us feedback. They're helping meeting with our service teams and helping to drive our, our roadmap. So we really appreciate the partnership. And yeah, it's been super successful. Yeah, that's great. And Scott, anything else you want to add? Yeah, I would just add that the relationship between AWS and, and the tour is very collaborative, as Elaine said. The, uh, you know, really what's been important to us is that we are experts at golf. We are experts at golf technology. Yes. AWS is experts at generative AI, machine learning, you know, cloud. Like, that's where we lean into the AWS to bring to us how can we execute on these ideas that we have for our players, for our fans, and for our business. All right. Uh, well, on that note, uh, thank you very much both for your time. Uh, so on behalf of Scott Gutterman from the PGA Tour and Elaine Chason for Amazon, I'm Zia Scaravelle from ZK Richardson. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.